So the only thing we've been uh, over so far is uh, I've shown the, the blog where there's lots of articles uh, about the build so far. I've described uh, everything in uh, written words, but I haven't done a video yet on the base build. So that's what I'm... I'm, I'm um, so I'm building my uh, I'm building my my dungeon board on these uh, these plates here. Uh, I had the the woodworks teacher at my school to cut them up. They are one feet by one feet. Um, so I'm building on that for this uh, modular dungeon. So far, I've built. Uh, let's just see here. We can get that to work. Oh man! Bam. Uh, hang on. Close up. Let's see here. Two seconds, guys. Come on. Hmm. There we go. All right. So. This is the, oh no, why is it not working? So this is the, uh, this is the dungeon build so far. I've built the corners uh, of my dungeon. And each corner has two open sides, so they can be pushed together uh, and rearranged in a modular fashion. So today we're gonna build some sections that go in between here and make it a uh, three by uh, two setup. I think I need to get a new cable for my uh, close-up camera. It's not too good. Okay, so. Since uh, since I've built the corners, I want uh, I only want to have uh, my new boards open in uh, two sides, and then two closed walls. And the other the other boards they are they're 12 inches, and I've made a four inch opening in the middle, so that's going to be there and on the other side as well um, boom, there so this is the part we're going to have open then uh, I need to think of of some kind of, uh, of design and I want some very large rooms uh, in uh, in these areas because I think that the first four tiles that I've been building uh, they have uh, rooms that are on the tiny side. They're they're almost too small. So so this first one we're just going to go super simple and uh, make it uh, a tile with only two large uh, rooms. There. I think that's going to be a nice design. Have some more floor space for uh, fighting. So that's the that's the first design. So what we need to do now is build uh, walls for uh, all the sides and a wall for uh, the middle. Let's put this one aside. So what I'm using is this kind of. It's not exactly XPS foam. Um, it's a bit higher in density. You can't use uh, like green stuff rollers on it, um, but you can still carve in it with a. Uh, with a pen and uh, I'm going to use the same outer uh, outer design as I've done in the first tiles so let's just start uh, drawing those in just need to make a sharp edge here it's off now this uh, XPS foam is uh, sound insulation for uh, when you're laying down floorboards and it's fairly cheap you can get a lot of it for uh, very few bucks uh, in a hardware store all 
all right and we have let's see if it's exactly 12 inches yeah almost pretty close so there we go 12 inches and 12 inches of this first wall here I'm just going to start by making the two sides that's not going to have a door are oh, this foam piece Let's see the second one is not long enough that can probably go in the middle so we'll just have to take a uh, another one here the the foam is uh, five uh, five millimeter thick and uh, to strengthen it I've added PVA glue, uh, a piece of cardboard from a frozen pizza box and uh, glue and the other layer of foam and then I've put it uh, under pressure while it's uh, drying so it gets pretty rigid, pretty strong and uh, it won't break like the foam when it's uh, alone now that there is uh, some cardboard in there as well. Let's cut this one up here. Alright, so that's the uh, outer walls here. Let's just measure it here. Uh, so I'm going to use the same stone details as I've been using on all the, the first tiles, and that's uh, a one inch thick layer of uh, foundation stones, at least here on the uh, outside. On the walls so like that a thin line of stones above that and then cobblestones on top and what I'm gonna do here I'm just using a black pen a cheap one I might need to get some new ones soon and I'm just going to draw in the foam uh, going a bit back and uh, forth Let's see here. Make sure not to to shadow from the camera here. If you if you draw too long a line at once, the the foam will start to uh, to tear. So it's better to go uh, back and forth like this. When the foam does tear, I just yank up a piece. That's adding some uh, texture to the to the walls as well. So the reason I'm using a um, the reason I'm using a black pen is, of course, to uh, add some shadows. And uh, when painting, I can do a a dry brush mostly uh, on top of this, and then have uh, some details already before washing I'll have these uh, shadowed areas in the walls it's really bugging me that uh, that my noise cancelling software isn't working anymore it's super weird and I can't I can't figure out why that's unfortunate, especially living in a house with uh, four kids and a dog, so they can quickly become a lot of of noise in the background and noise that's not voices. Um, so while I'm working here, please uh, drop any questions. In the chat interesting topics can be anything hobby related or anything else so we have something to talk about while working so that was the first two I think it's pretty clear here on the camera that it's a uh, pretty deep line I'm not measuring the the foundation stones here 
I'm just uh, going for roughly an inch by an inch never mind them not being the, the same size it's all good there we go care about those all those small pieces of foam here and there it's uh, it's just some added texture to the wall here we go like this boom, boom, boom. but I don't think this pen is as good as the, the ones I've been using for the first part of the board and those are unfortunately dead and I haven't been able to find the same brand again I'm going to look at uh, what's the plan for the theme of the room so originally when I planned uh, when I started planning this dungeon I wanted to um, make see if we can switch here to the close-up camera if it's working um, I wanted to make the rooms with a specific theme when designing so this big room right here it has these uh, metal bars in the wall and I wanted to make it into a permanent uh, prison room or torture chamber and actually build cells um, I skipped that idea I also wanted to do like uh, like a smithy with uh, a stream of water running through for the smith to uh, clean his uh, stuff uh, make a room with a lava stream or something like that but I um, I ditched that idea to have the thing be even more modular than uh, than else and then just build you know the specific uh, needed terrain pieces so I don't have a, a plan for these two rooms um, I have a ton of uh, Mantic Games uh, terrain crate stuff and uh, I have a lot of stuff from uh, King Games uh, Dunkeldorf Kickstarter so I do plan and that needs to be a big room, something like this, to make a uh, kitchen, a dining room, painting up uh, tables and chairs. I've been in the bit box finding all kinds of meats from uh, Ogus Brews and Britannia has some birds, uh, some fowls, and then then build a uh, a designated or build scatter pieces to make a designated kitchen area. I also want a room. Uh, with a complete uh, barracks theme also from the Kickstarter I have uh, practice dummies uh, archery uh, targets so build a room like that paint up some more stuff to make an actual throne room and a uh, treasure chamber so so I have lots of bits and pieces that I just need to paint and then the rooms can really be anything all right so this is the foundation I make sure that the stones here overlap um, so it won't yeah so it looks like when you're building Legos right and then I have the uh, the cobblestones up here and there's no particular plan to that I just uh, draw out different patterns making the stones fairly large the first wall I did uh, the stones are really small and it took forever uh, so so after that I've, uh, I've made them a bit bigger on all the other walls lots of uh, round corners on these ones go like this like that uh, and every time I've been taking a uh, hobby night doing uh, walls like this and drawing my hands have been aching at the end because I think that I'm using more force than I can feel right now but when I'm done, my hands will be uh, will be aching because I'm actually pushing harder than I can feel right now. 
Yeah. So no particular order to this. Small stones, larger ones, some squared, some rounds. And I hope when I get around to painting these, so far I'm missing uh, five boards for the originally planned dungeon. I want it to be a three by three board. And I hope that I've mixed enough paint uh, in the different colors that I'm using for foundations and floors and inner walls, that I've mixed enough and marked them out enough because it's been months now since I uh, painted the first parts. So I hope the paint is still good because it's going to be a pain to try and paint it in the same, uh, in the same, if I have to mix the same uh, tone of uh, of grays again that's probably going to be almost impossible so yeah oh like this and almost finished with the outer details on the first wall yay It's also been important for me in this entire build to make very different looking uh, stonework patterns in the different rooms so that it doesn't get boring to look at and I don't want it to be gray and gray uh, when, uh, when looking at the board. So here we have it, uh, the first outer wall, foundation, some stones on top and then uh, the cobblestones. Now I'm going to try something new, I'm going to try to add some texture to this uh, flat foam using this uh, steel brush and I have no idea how it's going to look and if it's going to mess it uh, up but I'm just going to and this is where that noise cancelling software would have been good I'm just going to lightly tap it it's making some uh, some holes here and there I don't know if they're visible here on camera. Yeah, you can see them. Um, so those are going to suck up a bit of uh, my homemade uh, brown wash. Now we have to make the walls with the, with the archways in them. And this is also a point where I've actually learned a lot from, from the, first time, uh, the first difference uh, once I built. Let's just see if we can show it here. Yeah, so let's take this uh, close-up camera and uh, see. Uh, so, there we go. So over there is the first dungeon tile that I built. You know, open there and in the other end, over here. And same goes for this one. And then I got the idea that there's no reason for that to be completely open. So over here is the uh, is the third tile, and that's I've added a beam, like it's an archway. Good extra detail, not a lot of work. And the fourth one I built, I actually built it with uh, rounded corners. Small thing, adds a lot to the look. Hello there, statue. Yeah, adds a lot to the look. So I think for um, for these straight corridors, I'll be doing the same. You know, adding some uh, archways here. Um, this is also the part where we need to do some more math. Because these are roughly a centimeter thick. So there. And on the other side, there. See, I just marked out here because I don't have a lot of foam and I don't want to waste it. So it goes from there to there. And the doorway has to be there and there. 
see that there. So door and this long. Let's just cut it up here so it's easier to work with. Sure I'm going to keep my hero quest pieces. I have a complete hero quest, I've painted up most of it. Uh, I might sell the furniture from Hero Quest. It goes for what I consider ridiculous prices. Uh, what people want to pay, are willing to pay for uh, for it. I think it's crazy. But even though I love Hero Quest and I really do, um, even though I love Hero Quest and I love the old pieces, they are not as good looking as uh, as the model uh, modern full plastic ones. Not as detailed and and. The, the, pla the, the cardboard kind of hurts my eyes being flat. So I might like a table like this. I'm still considering it. I might take out the cardboard and sell it because somebody will actually pay for just that piece of cardboard. Then use these plastic edges and just add some uh, uh, coffee stirrer uh, wooden planks instead. It's an easy upgrade. And it'll be a much nicer piece and somebody is actually willing to pay for the for the cardboard same goes for the cabinets uh, and the bookshelves the hero quest ones they'll need a fine price and the ones i have in plastic look much better so i know there's a nostalgia factor but uh, i'm not sure yet i'm not sure And there is something cool about having a complete hero quest and also I've painted up most of my hero quest so I'm not sure so all right cutting out the archway here and it's going to take a bit of of cutting to get it right I can't cut the angle in one because that it's going to mess up the foam and the cardboard so it just takes a bit of, you know, cutting this way and that. Cutting out some triangles. And then in the end, it'll be easy to remove the, the last pieces there. There we go. And there we go. Let's see if we can do it without breaking it too much. Uh, Hello, Asamorn. Hi there. What material? What material are you using? So I'm building from uh, some kind of foam board. Uh, it's kind. It kind of reminds me of XPS foam, but XPS foam or blue foam is uh, a lot more expensive. Uh, if you go into a hardware store, you can get this, and it's made for uh, sound insulation under uh, floorboards you know laminate floorboards so this is really cheap you'll get a, a huge huge pack like 10 square meters for uh, 15 euro or something like that so it's really cheap and you'll have all the foam you uh, all the foam you ever need really you can use uh, pin rollers like uh, you can with the real XPS foam. I've started making bases for my mini miniatures with the XPS foam because you can use a pin roller on them. Uh, that won't work on this foam. It's a bit harder, but it's cheap. And you can still draw detail in the foam with, uh, with a regular pen. So this is going to be the outside here, so we're just going to make the same kind of 
details as the other outside walls. Need to make some kind of detail here around the archway. So uh, let's see what I've done here. And some of the other ones. Yeah. Okay. Just going to draw there and draw there. So despite, despite uh, XPS foam. Uh, XPS foam is, uh, I don't know what it's, it's invented for originally, but yeah, it's called XPS foam and it's, uh, it's blue or green. Uh, it's often comes in, uh, in like an A4 paper size and you can buy it at craft stores. Uh, and, and it's super easy to cut. And, it's, and it will keep details like this, like when you're drawing it. Um, so, yeah, check it out. X, search for uh, XPX, uh, XPS foam uh, build. We can just, let me see if I can find one here. XPS foam more time building. Let's just see here if we can find something. Yeah, here. Uh, there we go. So, this blue foam stuff here. Fucking Pinterest. Um, like this. It's also used for, for building displays uh, and stuff like that. And, and this, is, this is easy to, to cut. With uh, with a knife, uh, a pincher, whatever you have uh, as a tool, uh, a sharp pencil, you can draw floorboards, and it will keep the detail. Uh, but the price, um, yeah, foam board, yeah, probably. Uh, so, so this is uh, and this is some kind of foam board as uh, as well, but it's just a lot cheaper. It's nice to work with the uh, XPS foam if you have the money for it. Uh, this is uh, this is just way cheaper. And most of the projects I do, I try to do uh, cheap. That's kind of a theme on the blog, really. Uh, scratch build or scrap build. Uh, recycle stuff and find uh, the the shortcuts that will make cheap terrain. And this is the um, this is the last foam I have of this kind, and I've been unable to find it. And I can't remember the store I got it in back in the days. So this is the foam I've been able to get after that and I haven't been able to find anything without these uh, these lines in it. That's pretty annoying and it's going to be interesting to see if I'm able to cover this up with uh, glue, thick paint because they're not as deep as the lines I'm going to cut myself. That's going to be interesting to see. So let's see here. So one of the other uh, one of the other good parts, one of the added effects of doing this archway is the entire the entire dungeon tile will be more uh, will be stronger because there is like the one I have here with the beam up here. There's no corner that's easy to 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 hang on to or, or knock into that might break it. Uh, whereas like this one, the first one I built, uh, on a bad day, if you bump into a corner here and there is cardboard in here and it has a thick layer of glue and a thick layer of sand and glue again, so it is pretty strong, but, but it's easier to break this uh, by accident than, uh, than the ones that actually has the arch. So that's a good added effect. 
All right, let's uh, let's make some cobblestone details on this one. And right now, uh, I, there's a Kickstarter running for dungeons, and uh, I think it's called Dungeons and Lasers. That's uh, a Polish company, because they've been doing a lot of terrain, and uh, and they are making a modular hard plastic dungeon that comes uh, ready to magnetize when you buy it, and that stuff looks amazing much better than anything you can bend yourself and it's not even well it's going to take it's going to take some cash from you if you want to fill a 3x3 board with their stuff but compared to a lot of the other things on the market it's fairly cheap uh, so if i hadn't if i hadn't or if, if i hadn't already started the project and like doing stuff like this, I might have uh, jumped on that Kickstarter uh, and just say frigate and then use the the cash uh, on that. The only costly thing on this project is the uh, zombie side uh, plastic doors. That's the most expensive part. Uh, just got the deluxe book of Rangers of Shadowdeep. Eager to get the building projects going. I think you might have told already, but if you take it to Hoison, what games are you going to host with it? All right, two questions. So, yeah, I'm going to bring it to Hoison, and uh, we're, of course, going to play Frostgrave on it, because Frostgrave, playing in the uh, open, ruined city environment, is one kind of game, uh, and that adds strength to some kinds of wizards, and playing Frostgrave inside the closed confinements and small rooms of a dungeon not only are there rules that that prohibit some kinds of spells like mod and leap they won't work but there's also uh there's also the the, the close details and some spells will, will just have more effects and and area of effect spells like elemental balls won't work as well so so it it might make for a a very different game when playing Frostgrave uh, in a dungeon setting. I'm looking forward to trying that. Um, other than that, I don't know. If somebody's bringing Cow, uh, Kings of War Vanguard, that could work well in a dungeon. Uh, I think uh, Mordheim, I haven't played Mordheim in, well, 10 years. Uh, that could be fun. So, I don't know. Whatever people want to play. Uh, and then we need the wall for the middle of the room the separating the the two rooms on this uh, dungeon tile there we go let's see if this oh perfect just long enough zero waste excellent excellent there we go throw this out and now a decision has to be made. So this wall is going to go up here, separating the two rooms. Should uh, should I be making like uh, two doors, one on each side, or one door in the middle? It could be a. I could use two of these. I should be able to take. Two of these uh, square doors and uh, make them into a single double door. That could that could work. But I'm not I'm not sure. Let me know if uh, you guys have any ideas. What uh, if you make uh, two doors or a double door, single door? I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But that can uh, that can wait. Let me know. So, single door, two doors, or a uh, double door in the middle, or uh, two doors in the sides. And now it's time to decide on some inner wall details. So, this is where you need to to start uh, keeping your thumb uh, your tongue straight in your mouth 
that's a Danish thing, I don't know if it works in English. So, make sure that the foundation stones, a double door I think, that will look cool. Yeah, that's what we're going for. So, make sure that the foundation stones are down. Uh, let's mark out the middle here, that's there. And for the other side, that's, not, that's one, this one. Foundation stones down, mark the middle, that's there, and let's do like uh, this, make sure that it's actually straight, there we go, and then we need to decide some um, just call it here, we're just going to mark it up here with a, I'm going to take this and say this is uh, two dots and this is a uh, dash. And for this one here, two dots and dash. Make sure that we, that we make the same kind of details on the inner walls uh, so it matches up. Alright, let's see if we can get a good idea for something here. Looking at the dungeon, what we have already made, see if we can find some kind of stone pattern for the for the first room here. I think we're just going to go mm, we're going to go for a straight line of stones in the top, straight line of stones in the bottom. Uh, straight in the side there, straight in the side there, and then some cobblestones in the middle. That's what we're going for here. So we're going to do that on this one, and that was the dash part. So here's the dash part as well. And there. Because it was just, it sucks. I've tried it once, you know, to make a mistake uh, on this part where I've drawn the, the, the wrong details on the wrong wall and then you have to line it up and it just doesn't look right. So you have to start over and, uh, and waste uh, a lot of time. But this, this fits. Okay, so let's just make some here and stonework there. Let's make this straight there and there, there. This and like this and like this. There we go. Let's bring that up. And we go like this here. And it really does a lot to the visuals on the dungeon build that there's uh, different kinds of, of stone detailing, especially when I get around to painting it and I can choose, you know, different different colors, different rooms. I've made sure to do the same uh, when doing the floors, that uh, some floors have brighter colors and are not just gray stone. Still need to get around to building, making some kind of... Uh, Carpets for some of the rooms, banners for some of the walls, that will add a uh, a lot of color and make it more interesting to look at. Bam, like this, and then I think we're going to go for some uh, cobblestone, round stone boulders here in the middle. Like we have it on the outside walls. There we go. Two different ones here. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Make sure there's no like pattern to it here. That's always kind of funky because it's pretty hard for the brain when you think that I don't want to make a specific pattern and then 
you always end up doing it anyways. All right, here we go. Bum, bum, bum. And there. Well, it would be nice to glue this thing together tonight. That's the plan for this, uh, this work session. Uh, finish all these walls, glue it together, put some pressure on it and let it dry. If I can get one tile done in a night, that's that's really nice. All right, next up, other one here. Let's go there. Whoops, this here. Um, would be nice playing some kind of Diablo miniature games for this as well. I've actually been thinking about getting some 15 millimeter or 20 millimeter uh, models just to make those uh, fallen ones from Diablo. That would be pretty cool. I've no idea what I'm going to use them for for a game. Nightwatch would probably be good for that kind of minion. All right, here we go. Bam, bam, bam. Should get a ventilator in here. It's getting pretty hot compared to when I was working outside. But there it's dark and cold now that it's uh, it's starting to. Summer is getting into autumn. Boom, boom, boom. Really happy that my wife got the yeah rock an issue <laughs> yeah totally Diablo so uh, I'm really happy that my wife got the splendid idea to move our bedroom outside it was her idea to start sleeping outside we've been doing that at the time we're recording this. We've been sleeping outside for uh, five months and it's only been two weeks since I decided to move our bed outside. So I could have done that a bit earlier, that would have been smart. But that freed up an entire room for hobby work and streaming studio. So that's cool. And uh, my wife don't mind, so that's even cooler. go I need to be cool I would like to at some point try streaming filming some uh, some player with player games not sure if we're if it would work if we're good enough at uh, English or can keep it's easy enough for me to keep talking speaking English here when I'm by myself but if it was a uh, Play was his play game. I'm not sure. So that was the uh, dash wall. Dash wall. Then we need the uh, need to pick up one of these archway walls. Going for the same design. So stones at the bottom. Stones at the bottom. Stones at the top. Rub. Square stones, square stones. Uh, at the ends here, there, at the end here. And then the archway itself, there and there. Let's try it, uh, draw it up. And we'll soon have the first room ready. That's awesome. It's really cool. Two, like this here, and now I've been uh, now I've been drawing stonework for an hour, and I can start to uh, feel it uh, in my fingers, like I uh, was talking about in the beginning, that your hands will get sore in the end. And I'm even trying to be mindful about not uh, pressing too hard 
with my pen. But I can still feel it in the hands. Here, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like this. Awesome. Really appreciate you guys watching. It's awesome. Uh, helping me trying to unlock that affiliate state on Twitch that will open up new features and once open it can't be lost unless you act like a douchebag so that's going to be nice it just takes a lot of streaming um, there we go and I have a couple of other streams planned uh, to have soon. Hello, new viewers, please uh, join the chat. It just bumped up by a couple of numbers. Uh, ask away if you want to know what we are working on. I keep a constant look at the uh, chat. Uh, never mind if uh, the question have already been asked. We'll just uh, go over it. And uh, please uh, let me know where you're uh, joining us from and what kind of uh, games you're into. So I've been sharing this uh, stream I was encouraged to by a uh, co-worker who's uh, not himself into miniature gaming and he encouraged me to uh, share this in a couple of uh, Dungeons and Dragons groups and back when I played RPGs we didn't use uh, we never used miniatures but a lot of people do so it's pretty perfect to yeah sharing a home build and cheap dungeon for some of those uh, RPG people and it's all simple techniques there's nothing here that anybody can anybody can build this stuff so uh, so I shared it so it would be interesting if there's actually some people here from some uh, from some RPG groups so uh, let me know what you uh, what you guys are playing in this uh, in this hobby all right so this is the middle wall let's just find uh, what's the middle here? It's this is 11 inches, so that's five and a half. That's there, and then I haven't made a double door yet, but that's what we're going to do here. So the double door, and then we need to cut some stuff off to make it fit. So this door is. Better get inside the camera again here. This door is uh, three centimeters, and out there that's like uh, four millimeters. So that's three. Yeah, close enough. Three. So that's six centimeters, and we're cutting off four millimeters. That's eight. So that's five point two. That's. Uh, 2.6 in each direction so that's there and 2.6 in the other direction there that should that should fit the door okay and then you just need to check the height it's there and there and just drawing around the the doors here. Uh, I'm gonna cut this out, make room for the door. Now, at the f on the first uh, tile that I did, I'm just going to show that here on the uh, close up. On the first tile that I did, I tried making some uh, wooden details around the around the doorway. Let's see if this camera gets any picture. No. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So. I, might, I tried making some wooden details around the door and I didn't think it looked good on the phone. Um, so I stopped doing that on all the other tiles and I just made stone details around. But after painting them up, I actually like it. I think it's, uh, it's nice and it's uh, good to have something that's not grey. So uh, we'll be doing that for, uh, for this right here.
So we're going to do some uh, some wooden detailing around this. First, let's cut it up. Here we go. So, and we don't want to mess up the foam on the other side. So we're going to be real careful here. And there we go. Let's see here. Careful, careful, careful here, and then we can probably cut it straight down here. Yes, nice. And the other side. There we go. And then the the top of the door here. on the way to not mess up the, the cardboard too bad. Here, let's cut here. See if we can get this off. Nice, nice. Um, this needs to cut it a bit higher here. I think it's going to look really nice with the uh, with this uh, double door in the middle, especially considering that it's a big room. Hello, ten guys again. Please join the chat. Ask away uh, what we're doing and uh, let me know what kinds of uh, games you're playing or where you're uh, where you're joining us from. We're just about to uh, make the details here on the on the first room the last details on the first room let's see here let's try and make some wooden details about around this uh, double door so we go like we go like this some pretty large beams uh, let's see if we can do it here as well and for this You have to be careful when using the steel brush later. I think for this I'm going to use a, uh, a regular, you know, a pencil instead of my uh, pen. Because the pencil has a sharper edge. So it would be easier to draw some uh, wood grains, lines in the foam, like this. Yeah, there's the thinner lines than I could do with the with the pen. And again, this is where you can really feel the difference in material from this cheap insulation foam and the um, and the more expensive uh, blue foam uh, XPS foam board because it would be easier to do. Uh, good wood details in uh, in the expensive foam. There we go. Not too bad. Not too bad. I look good when uh, paint. All right. So that's uh, that's the first room here. Let's see if we can. So see, like we're going to put this up here and this wall here in the middle. So now we just need to draw up some uh, stone details on the other side. Find some kind of of distinct, uh, different design for uh, for the other side. I want it to look as different as possible from uh, from the first room. So I'm not sure how. I think one of the details we could add was a, um, a grate here big metal grate like I've been doing in some of the other rooms it's an easy detail to add I'm gonna paint it in some metal colors there's a dungeon so that'll work good It's just an easy way to break up the walls. 
on the stonework adding small stuff like this again if I had been working in real XPS foam I would be able to make something a lot more detailed uh, in the foam than I'm currently able to okay a couple of couple of viewers down here that's okay we're keeping the goal is to have at least three guys watching you know about in order to uh, unlock some features on twitch that's good Let's see here oh it's pretty hard to cut this out there we go and the last one Let's see here in a second like like this whoops paint the flag in here when we get around to painting and that will uh there's gonna be a nice little extra detail in the wall so let's see if we can come up with some kind of stone uh how we're going to make this uh this room bum, 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 bum. i think we will be just doing like uh, i'm going to do a broad line of stones there broad line of stones there and one in not exactly in the middle mm. let's do three big stones here in this part there we go like this bum, 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 bum. that's it's gonna look different than any of the other rooms so three big ones one two three and here one two three and then in the so what to do I got think uh, we're going to go with five rows of stone for the rest of the wall that's pretty different looking than than the first room the goal here as long as the the various rooms doesn't have the same detailing then it's going to do a lot for uh, for the complete look of the build there and then I'm going to find uh, another way to build the rooms on the second of these uh, straight uh, straight tiles so that I do everything I can to make the the different setups look very different from one another giving me as many different options as possible for setups all right so that's that then we can use the uh, the steel brush just to add some texture to this wall now hitting that great yeah there we go so first wall all done next wall let's see um what's up and what is down there we go mm, just gonna add another grate on this one might as well do some of the same details this one up here bar we will have a three there so like this and last one and the outside 
Here we go. Whoop. And whoop. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that fits. Just gonna check that it was the same. And bring out the knife. And cut into here. So my knife blade is actually getting pretty dull. I think that's because the glue wasn't really uh, wasn't really all dry. It's dulled the blade. Never mind that. Change it before the next build. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. Great detailing and some big stones here at the edges. And five rows of stone between. One, two, three. Four, not going to measure it too uh, too precise. It doesn't matter that stuff is uh, you know a bit crooked, a bit a bit off. You know it'll just add to the look of uh, an old dungeon. So let's just consider it extra detail and I'm going to s uh, save a lot of time not measuring everything too precisely it's just it's gonna look good so uh, welcome to new viewers please join the chat ask away any questions I've built a lot of terrain um, over the years any kind of questions or something we should uh, look into in another stream or another video uh, ask away something uh, particularly I've been I think terrain building was, is, is one of the things I enjoy most about our hobby especially you know looking at this the results there's not much better than than finishing a, a new board or finishing a a big scratch built piece it's awesome uh, really adds a lot to the uh, to the gaming experience for me at least it's very important I spend a lot of time uh, preparing my boards before before a game I can go for an entire day uh, just um, you know uh, messing around with the details adding stuff it's it it, it tells uh, so much of the story in whatever game you play, uh, that that the design you choose for your uh, for your board setups, so really like all the small stories you're able to tell um, using your terrain collection. Now it's time to glue them in place. Cool, that's good. Um, this is how can I see how long this been running? One hour, 45 minutes? Yeah. All right, so I'm just using a uh, regular uh, wood glue, water-based wood glue, since I'm not storing my models in, uh, in my garage where it's uh, wet and uh, moist. It doesn't have to be a uh, water repellent or water resistant root glue. So yeah, cheap one. Um, and I'm just going to use a cheap brush and then use lots of it. Oh, let's, uh, let's put some walls in place. Okay, so this is an important time not to mess something up. This one goes over here. This one goes uh, down here. 
this one goes over here and this one goes in the middle like this and this one goes up here like this everything laid out checked out that it's done the right way and then we are going to add lots of glue here to, uh, to the underside here this put this into place there stand uh, first sidewall gonna make sure to to add some glue here because that's when the where the walls will line up and then here and I all the more glue the better and I'm not necessarily but don't use too little don't save on the glue I'm always building my terrain uh, thinking that my my kid loves to play with the stuff that I do and it needs to be able to hold hold that so here make sure the corner line up there and then I'm going to take this stapler that's also an idea I got after building a couple of these tiles and just give it one right there and another one that'll keep that in place they won't uh, then they won't you know fall apart when we do the the rest of this and then we're going to take this wall here and uh, some glue where they line up wrap, 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 wrap down and down here lots of glue and before this is done I mean every part of this build will have had several layers of glue a mixed glue into the paint um, oh no. I mix glue into the paint I mix uh, glue yeah I add glue to the top of the build all around uh, in order to uh, add sand then I paint on top of that with the paint mixed with glue as well after this is dry I'm going to go and find all the small uh, areas where where there's like a hole and then I'm going to add glue to those as well so so when this is done it'll have been glued in place a lot of times to make sure that it just sticks together another way to look at it is like all the terrain pieces that I do should be able to to stay alive and not break uh, at a uh, at a club and people are always harder with the stuff at that uh, at those clubs see that so yeah all right everything is good and go like this one it's like uh, here some glue where these two connect and the other side there and below loads of glue lots and lots of glue okay wah, wah, wah. yes put this in place and it fits so the pre-measuring has been all right uh, give it just Stable there and another one there and the other end. Awesome. Bam. That must be a very annoying sound in the microphone. 
when I use that stable gun. Clacks. And the middle wall going in like this. Some glue there, and some glue here on the other side, where this one slides down, and a thin, uh, it's just super sensitive, the microphone, yeah, probably is, I really need to figure out how to make that noise cancel stuff work again. And here, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to add the door uh, yet. Uh, the doors need to be cut up and uh, glued together with the uh, plastic glue, since I'm going for that double door setup. And uh, I'm not going to to glue the door in place before I've I've done all the the floor tiles and probably also the painting so that I won't hit the door uh, with paint and glue there we go let's just see if we can get this one in here and uh, yep let's just turn this around make sure that the right detail is on the right side there we go. And uh, straight dungeon tile is ready. Let's take the close up cam here, see if that works. Uh, close up. So here we are. One kind of stone detail in one room, another in. And that one, same outside as. So basically, and we'll just have to. We'll need to do a. We've been uh, covering. Um, we've been covering how to, uh, something about the material, the the foam uh, that I use, uh, how to draw in details and uh, mark out uh, a floor plan. Uh, keep your uh, keep focused. Make different kinds of uh, details on the build, and. Uh, yeah, two hours of work to uh, and a bit of prep work before, of course. Uh, two hours, two hours of work to to build the, the 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 structure here. It'll take like ten minutes to add small tiles to, uh, details to the floor. Uh, the paint is already mixed up, so that's going to be really quick to to paint all over it. And the last thing I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to uh, take the build that we've done. Uh, put uh, one of the one square foot MDF pieces on top of it and add some weight to press it down while the glue dries and tomorrow I'll be ready to paint it but I'm going to um, before doing that I'm going to build the uh, other tile and then I'll have a 2x3 dungeon instead of a 2x2 two two dungeon um, nice Thanks for uh, watching. Thanks for uh, joining the stream. Uh, thanks for the input in the chat. This is going up on uh, YouTube in a cut version. I'm going to uh, drink another beer over at my Discord channel. Uh,